Welcome to Bach Tower Gardens, a National Historic Landmark. It's located south of Orlando in Lake Wales, Florida. One man's vision and his gift to the American people. Neither the sanctuary nor the tower was conceived as a memorial or as a monument. Even though we visited in January, the gardens were beautiful. I can't imagine how gorgeous this place must be during the summertime. There is a display on the porch of the visitor center telling you what's blooming in the garden, giving you a sample and the name. And that is always helpful because we wander around these parks and things and go, I wonder what that is. And if they're not labeled, then you just don't know. But this was a very helpful thing that they had. The Olmsted legacy at Bach Tower Gardens begins with Edward Bach. He selected Frederick Law Olmsted Jr., the nation's premier landscape architect, to bring his vision of a garden sanctuary to fruition. The partnership built one of America's finest public gardens. This exhibit and the outdoor walking tour are part of the national celebration marking the 200th anniversary of the birth of Frederick Law Olmsted Sr., founder of American Landscape Architecture. Of course, most people go to visit to see and hear the tower, but the gardens are spectacular. On February 1, 1929, Edward W. Bach presented Bach Tower Gardens to America as a gift to his beloved country. President Calvin Coolidge traveled from Washington, D.C. on a special train on the Atlantic Coast Line Railroad to speak at the dedication ceremony. Music filled the day-long events, and including the bells of the Krillian. An estimated 75,000 people attempted to attend the ceremony, though many were held up on the crowded roads. Local gas stations ran out of gas, and grocery stores were bare of food. Florida had never seen an event like this before. That's really exciting. Let's talk a little bit about the Krillian. The musicality of metal. The Carillion's enormous keyboard, or clavier, is the interface between the musician and the music. The musician at the keyboard, known as a caroliner, uses both hands and feet to strike the keys and pedals. Each key is connected through cables and levers to the clapper of a bell. The clapper strikes the inside of the bell, causing it to ring. The bell itself is hung stationary and does not move. What am I talking about? Well, look at this tower. This thing is up in the top, and we're going to hear it play. Playing the bells can require a great deal of physical exertion. The amount of force applied by hands and feet can vary from gentle movements to forceful playing and result in dynamic performances. The largest bells have the deepest tones and require the greatest force. The day we were there, the Caroliner played approximately six different musical pieces. As Olmsted's gardens took shape, Edward Bach imagined it filled with the sweet sounds of bells, recalling childhood memories in the Netherlands. He envisioned an architectural masterpiece that would house an enormous carillion whose music would blend seamlessly with both nature and design. Carillions are the heaviest of all instruments, consisting of no fewer than 23 bells and typically located in tall bell towers. Bell towers are common in Europe, particularly in the Low Countries. They are frequently used as timepieces as well as a way to signal the threat of storms or enemy attack. Gradually, they change from serving as watchtowers and clock towers into singing towers that feature the pure pleasure of bell music. Bach Tower Garden Singing Tower houses one of the world's largest and finest carillions. Its 60 bells, weighing more than 123,500 pounds, occupy the upper third of the structure. At the time of its installation, the Carillion was the heaviest in the world. Its music has become a core part. It has been enjoyed by millions of visitors over the years. Students of the Carillion typically have had previous study in applied music. It is helpful, for example, to have learned to play another keyboard instrument such as the piano or organ and to have skill in reading music in both the treble and bass clefs. There are university-level Carillion programs in the U.S. and abroad. The Royal Carillion School in Mechelen, Belgium, is the oldest and largest Carillion school in the world. The Guild of Carillioners in North America lists 29 institutions that offer Carillion instruction in the U.S. and Canada. Please like and comment. After touring through the visitor center, we headed out to see the Pinewood Estate. The state is often open for tours, but it wasn't the day of our visit. We had a few minutes to wait to hear the bells singing. The Singing Tower, with its carillion, plays concerts every day at 1 p.m. and 3 p.m. and shorter musical pieces at other times during the day. We had a few minutes to go around Pinewood Estates. Okay, it's time. We headed over to the tower. Before the concert, we found this sign that said, Meet the Carillonaire. I have a really tough time with that word, don't I? Meet the Carillonaire here, following the performance. I'll tell you about him in a minute. Have you subscribed yet? And if you have, thank you.
The tower is spectacular, and the reflection pool adds a great dynamic. A little bit about Edward Bach. He was born October 9th in 1863 at Den Nelder, the Netherlands, and he died within sight of this tower on January 9th, 1930. At his request, his family placed his grave in the lawn in front of the great brass door. Coming to the United States as a poor immigrant, boy of six, he achieved success as a writer and editor. Late in life, he created the sanctuary as a place of repose for the human spirit, built the tower with the great Krillian as its central accent, and presented them to the American people for visitation as his thanks for the success they had given him. Okay, the music's over. Is a Krillian air coming out? He's going to come out the skate, right? Meet Gert. He's from Belgium. He attended the Royal Krilliner School between the ages of 13 and 17. He is the fourth Krilliner in the 93 years of the tower's existence. There are 600 of these kinds of towers in the world, 200 in the U.S. and 300 in Belgium and the Netherlands. Guess how often it has to be tuned? I don't think you'll guess. Every 300 years. And it has to be shipped to London. This one has 60 bells. A little bit more about Edward. He was the editor of the Ladies' Home Journal. And what he did here in Lake Wells was transformed a sandy hill into one of the most beautiful places in the country. The tropical plants give shade to visitors and home to more than 100 species of birds. Don't miss out on the park's other features like Window Pond, the Endangered Plant Garden, and this anilomatic sundial. Unclassic road trip. Tennis shoes on the ground.